Okay, hi, my name is Ram. Welcome back to the series where we build real web application with React, Redux, and Node.js. And today, in this session, we're going to continue with Redux Saga. Let's go to User Actions. So we'll have User Actions here. User Actions. Ah, actions. Users. Okay, so now this sign up stuff, we do not need it anymore because we do not use it anymore, right? It was a thunk action, we replaced it with Saga, so just delete it. And now, the last thing here that is actually the um, thunk action is this fetch current user. So let's get rid of this too. Uh, for that, we will create two. Uh, new actions. The first one will be fetch current user request and another one fetch current user success. We're not going to deal with sec, uh, fetch uh, current user failure, um, but you can do it as an exercise. Like if you can't uh, fetch data about the current user, maybe you should display some kind of global error message like a pop-up or something like that that tells that, hey, something going wrong. We can't continue with that. Okay, so again, just the pure actions. So I'm just going to copy this to just one would be sufficient. And that's going to be the fetch current user request. And here the same thing, but fetch current user success. And here fetch current user request. And I do not need to have any kind of data passed into it. So I'm going to just remove it. And here for the success, we'll have user and we'll pass it down here. And that's going to be the fetch current uh, user success. So now at the top here, I'm just going to uh, fetch current user request and fetch current user success. Now I need to go to the types. And I need to add these two things. So I'm gonna just fetch, fetch cur current user request. And the same thing goes with, ah, man, uh, success. So I'm gonna just find R here pretty quickly and we'll do the success. Okay, so now we have actions, everything's good. Um, we're ready, right? So now here um, we use the fetch current user, we're gonna just remove it. All we do here is we just fetch in the current user via API, then we get the data, uh, data, the user data, and we dispatch user fetched action. So instead of this user fetched, just to make it a little bit more um, like in one style naming, we'll use not the user fetched, but instead we'll use the fetch. Oh yeah, that's user fetch is actually this one that we created, the success one, right? So here we do not need to have API, we do not need to have user fetched. So and in and in types, we do not need to have user fetched anymore. Okay. So that will break everything, right? So there are two places that we where we use it. We use it in index.js and we use it in app component. So let's go to index.js file. And here, uh, here's where we uh, dispatch and fetch current user. And here is where we dispatch and user fetched. So both of these actions are changed. So user fetched, we just rename it to um, user fetched. Fetch, uh, fetch current user success. And here we'll do the fetch current user request. Okay. Now, of course, nothing happens because we just dispatch in pure actions. Now we need to go, also let's go to app, app component, um, app.js. And here in the component mount, we do if props is authenticated, then we fetch current user. Instead of this fetch current user, we'll have fetch current user request. And here as well, fetch current user request. And yeah, the, the bottom here, fetch current user request. And uh, here as well, fetch current user 
request. I should do, I, I sh yeah, I should have done the search and replace. Nice. So now we're ready to create the, uh, the saga for it. So let's go to root saga. And that's not the one, root saga. And here let's add another one. And that will be the fetch current user request. And inside of this, we're going to fetch user saga. Fetch user saga. So let's input it. Fetch user saga. So now we need to go to the user saga and create one. So we go to user sagas and let's create another one expert function. That's the generator function, fetch user saga. Um, and we, we're not going to try anything because we are not handling the error, but you should. You should, of course. So again, we'll have the user, we'll have the yield, we call the API user fetch current user. That's it. And after that, when we have it, we, we don't do anything else, right? As a side effect. Uh, so we j j just going to be put uh, user logged in user. Okay, let's have a look. So fetch current user is not defined in root saga. Makes sense. So let's go to the root saga and let's add fetch current user request. So now in types doesn't contain named user fetched anymore. So in reducers user. So now we need to go to the reducers. I totally forget about the reducers. So we'll have the reducers user. And here we have the user fetched. So instead of this user fetched, we changed it to uh, fetch current user success. And here as well. Whoop, nice and easy. So now let's um, let's have the test three account. Test three, test.com, test three, test. Sign up, we redirect it back. So now if you reload the page, everything, everything seems to work. If you go in here, you can see that user logged in. So first of all, we have the fetch current user request. And then we have the user logged in successfully um, dispatched. That's nice. That's what we wanted to achieve. So as the home task, as the way to practice, you can go to another action that we have. We have, um, we have auth actions, right? Yeah, auth actions. And here we have a lot of thunk actions that you can transform into sagas. And after you've done that, you can just remove thunk middleware from your application. But that's a lot of work to do, right? I'm gonna leave it like this. And if you want to practice, you can do that and create a pull request to the GitHub repository that we have and all this kind of stuff. And we're gonna continue using Redux sagas from now on in this application. So we will work with them quite a lot and see maybe more advanced features that it has. So the last thing that I wanna uh, tackle is the redirection. Right now we redirect because of the, um, because of the routes that, that we have. But let's say that if we go to the app component and here we have the guest route route. So yeah, here we have, for example, for the sign up, we have the guest route. That's why we are redirecting because only guests can access it. So let's just make it simple route without any kind of guest route. Okay. So that means that now I can go back to the sign up, something like that. And it, yeah, it works nice. So what I want to do after the sign up, I want to redirect. So again, if I now try to do that, test four, test.com, test four, test, and I'm just sign up. It created the user. So because if I click sign up again, you will see that, hey, it's already taken. It created the user, but I haven't been redirected anywhere. So how to do that, how to achieve that. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to use the history object and history is the singleton. When we create history, it will be one object for the whole application. And then we can use it both in our router and in our sagas. But for, to do that, we need to do a little bit of legwork. So let's go back to our code and let's go to index.js file. So here we're using browser router. And this browser router includes in itself 
history object that is created for the browser. So what we can do, we can just find it all and change it to router, just a simple router. After that, this router, now if, if we use only this, the general router, we need to supply history object. So that's what we're gonna do, history equals to history. So now we need to define this history and we go into input history from history file. Maybe you can come up with some different names to differentiate the history um, that like a package from the history like of our own custom history file. So let's go with history.js and all we need to do is we need to import the create browser history from history and after that we just export default result of this create browser history method. And that will create history object and now we will use it in our router. So if we go back here, let's reload the page. And you can see that our router still works, it still have the back button, so that's that nice, no, no errors, so we use in our own history object. And that means that we can import it anywhere in our application and use it outside of our routes and inside of our components. That means in our sagas. So let's go back and let's go to user sagas. And right here after we this uh, put this after we put this user logged in action, we go into history.push dashboard. And now just let's import history from history. And that should do it, right? Because we're using the same singleton object. So let's Let's log out and let's create another test5, test.com, test5, test. Sign up and we've been redirected. Nice, cool, cool stuff. So that's, that's how you can from now on use the history object anywhere you want to redirect and your application will react to it and the back button still works. That's nice. So the only thing that I want to do is I want to go back and I actually want to go back to uh, app dot component uh, app component and change it back to guest route because I really want to protect it from um, from unneeded uh, requests. So that's it. That's it. We we learned about Redux sagas. We transformed our sign up process. We learned how to redirect like a side effect. Uh, we learned a lot of stuff. So basically, try it out by yourself and see how it goes and let me know what you think about it in the comments below or just shoot me an email. So thank you very much for your time. If you like this episode, just hit the like button, subscribe to this channel. If you want to support my work, become my patron or just make a one-time donation via PayPal or even better, buy my course dedicated to React and learn it from basics to advanced topics. Thank you very much for your time and have a great day.